Welcome to this video guide to painting some 15mm sci-fi miniatures. Here's a quick look around the workbench and you can see I use a lot of the Privateer Press P3 paints which are very nice, they have a nice liquid pigment which makes them nice and smooth and there's some Games Workshop inks which are also used extensively. Whilst painting, uh, I use a tissue there and a wet palette. Oh, there's the Grunts 15mm rules, which are the rules which I use with these 15mm figures. And a big pile of junk. These are my brushes, which are the Royal brushes, size 4. You can get those at most hobby stores. And these are another type of brush I use, which I believe are the System 3 from De La Roni. I actually use a size 4 brush a lot, uh, even though that sounds a bit crazy when you're painting such fine scale miniatures, but if you can get a decent larger brush, you find it can still go into a fine point and hold the paint longer. So it doesn't dry out as quickly, uh, you can paint more of the surface and still have a very fine point for the detail. Here I'm just pointing out a mix of the Ground Zero Games 15mm sci-fi miniatures. These are the ones that I'm painting, which have had a, a grey undercoat from Tamiya. I use the Tamiya uh, grey undercoat primer, and then just a couple of base coats have been added to them. So cold black, which is a kind of a bluey tinged black, has been used for the helmets. And I've gone for iron hold grey for most of the weaponry and any other sort of detailed areas. So you can see he's got a control panel in his hand, and that's iron hold grey as well. And a little splashing of midland flesh has been used to do the facial areas on there. Traitor green. Again there, which is the base coat for the uniform, and then Thrall Flesh, which is being used to highlight that, which is a kind of a slightly sandier green, which I'll do mix in with a Traitor Green to get a highlight area. I'll not be doing too much in the way of highlights because it's only sort of 15mm scale, and I'm painting them for the tabletop, so detail's not vital. This is my wet palette from Privateer Press. You can make these yourselves, but uh, this is just one I bought. So it's conveniently clips together and has a sponge in there to keep the, uh, the water in. The tracing paper allows the, uh, the moisture to creep through into your paint by osmosis, which means it stays wet while you're working with it, which is ideal for blending and mixing and saves things drying out and going all nasty. So you don't need to really rely on osmosis to keep your paint dry when you're only painting a single 15mm figure. But I'm just demonstrating how useful this is if you were painting maybe 6 to 10 models at the same time, because with 15mm you can put them on, on, on a small stick and paint them all at once, in which case you'll want to keep your paint moist rather than having to keep dragging out of the bottle. So I've got on there my Thrall Flesh, which is the lighter one, and the Traitor Green, which I've just dropped on there ready to start to mix up. The Privateer Press Paints are really nice for mixing together um, because they're such a fine liquid pigment, you find you can very quickly mix them and, and get a very good result. So somewhere halfway between the two tones I've used here to do the highlight on the uniform. Now I'm just painting on the highlights here really, which I'll just pick some raised areas and uh, splash some paint on as you can see. I'm using that size 4 brush which is pretty big but you can get into a reasonable point and also because the uh, the size of the brush it stays moist so you can do a lot of the figure in one go it saves you running backwards and forwards between the paint and the model. 
because these are 15mm in scale, I'm not going to be taking a, a huge amount of time over this. I'm just sort of picking them out as I go along. Perfection is not what I'm after. If you're still listening in, you may notice that uh, I'm leaving in almost all of the, uh, the film content for this, which means the paint job is almost real time. Obviously that uh, could be considered extremely boring and potentially something to do if you were really stuck on a rainy day to, to watch every brush stroke I do here. There are lots of cuts where I've taken out uh, fuzzy out of focus stages of the painting but generally speaking I've left it all in so you can see um, in terms of the actual paint job it probably takes me about an hour to finish this from the start of the video and you're getting about 35-40 minutes of it on this uh, video sequence. There's plenty of drying time in between though because I did uh, do a stage where I sprayed on some Tester's Dull Coat near the end and also some ink washes which I think I left for about half an hour to an hour to make sure they were completely dry before I continued. So now I'm just going to use a lighter shade again, which just means a little bit of mixing going on on the palette to get that lighter shade. Of course I've got enough paint on there to probably do about six of these small models, but uh, again as I was saying earlier I'm just demonstrating painting this in one, one set of models, so kind of overdoing it on the amount of paint in that palette. So this next shade, so essentially I'm doing two shades on here, you can see on that shoulder pad I'm now not covering the whole area, I'm now really picking out the, the finer edges and just sort of doing a very quick job of it. I've used a hex base here, it's a metal hex base and the models themselves, their tabs are resting inside the lip of the top of that base and then I've used some basing material to, to surround them to give them that textured edge. In the Game of Grunts this is a specialist unit which is why they're mounted on a larger hex base. They act as an independent model and uh, they have slightly higher powered weaponry. Obviously they've got a, a hell here or a high energy laser and uh, as, a, as a unit they're a little bit more powerful weapon-wise than you would have um, expected from a normal squad and also they're able to potentially penetrate and do damage to uh, vehicles with that, with that larger weapon. You can see my sort of rough and ready approach to adding highlights on there is beginning to give them some definition and I've now painted on his helmet so that's going to have to be sorted out. Here I've used an even brighter shade of the Thrall Flesh, probably neat Thrall Flesh from my wet palette and I'm just doing right along the uh, highlighted edges just to give them that extra bit of sharp uh, definition. It's going to be washed over with an ink wash so any really bright looking edges are going to be toned down anyway. In a way you need to make a model look a little bit more cartoon bright when you're going to tone it down later on with a full brown wash.
So here I'm going on now with a colour called Bastion Grey, which is going on top of the Iron Hull Grey, which was the base coat. So no mixing of colours here, just straight on with a highlight and you can see I'm going along the edge of the weapon casing on that high energy laser just to um, give it some sharper highlights again in the uh, raised areas rather than the rather than in the recesses Now I'm actually using Troll Blood Highlight, which is an even brighter grey from the P3 range. And then again, it just saves me mixing colours here because I'm just going onto the edge. As you can see, it gives the edge of the weapon casing that extra highlighted detail. And as I mentioned while I was doing the uniform of the guys, this is going to be washed over with a darker wash. So the fact that it's quite a bright highlight is going to be uh, lost a bit when it's under the ink, but that kind of works to your advantage because you get a nice uh, nice look to it through the, the ink wash. Sometimes I accidentally go out of focus while I'm working away here. Apologies for that, it's actually quite hard to paint a model like this whilst keeping the camera uh, in front of you so you've got to look over where the camera is and it's very easy to uh, go out of focus. Hopefully when I get an improved uh, high res camera I'll be able to do this and it will stay in focus without me having to constantly put my fingers into the frame because when I do that it kind of brings it into focus a bit more. Here you can start to see from above how that uh, highlighting along the edge of the uh, weapon casing is working out. It's giving it that sort of shading in bands. You don't really have to go to town this much with it. You could have, you know, for example, I could have painted the entirety of the weapon in a uh, metallic colour and then washed it with a black ink and it would have been done and dusted really. In retrospect, I could have actually done different portions of that weapon in different colours, like a metallic front um, and then the casing area in a slightly different colour, but uh, I think I'm pretty happy with the way it's worked out. So I'm just going to mix in some Signar Blue here with some of the coal black and you can see that coal black on the left there is a sort of a bluey black. I'll mix those together to give the helmets a highlight. So I don't want to go straight on with a striking Signar Blue which is very bright. As with all the other areas I'm just picking out the raised panels and raised areas. A lot more detail could be done on these um, NAC 15mm figures in terms of their helmets, but uh, again I'm just going on with a sort of basic blue on here to keep it nice and simple.
So what I'm doing now is I'm using Menoth White Highlight, which is just like a white really, but slightly creamier, and uh, popping it on the corners of all of the uh, hardware and on the models as well in certain places. There's no sort of scientific approach to this apart from getting it on those edges and giving them that sort of very ultra bright uh, highlighting on the edge. Again, these will be washed over, so it will it will dull down that uh, extra tone. I just find the white dot technique works pretty well at uh, 15 mil for giving things a nice sort of bright edge. Because even in military terms, if you look at things from a distance, there's a lot more white on it than you than you actually think. And um, just popping it on there will give it that extra definition edge, so you can see where things end, which is particularly important on uh, models of this size. I don't white dot on absolutely everything, otherwise it would look a bit uh, crazy and psychedelic, I think, if every single corner of the model had a, a white dot on it. Uh, so I'm kind of sparing with them and, and just sort of splash them around like that. Just popping my fingers in there for scale again so you can see the size of these. It's easy when you're zoomed in here to think that I'm working on a much larger figure and therefore the highlights can look a little bolder than normal but actually uh, when these are down on the tabletop they're going to be a very small unit and um, generally speaking you're not going to see all of that level of detailing so some bright contrasts on there will make them stand out a little and uh, look like interesting models on the battlefield. Just some bloodstone brown in use here just to bring some extra definition to the packs and accessories that these guys have got uh, around their person. This is a good angle to see how those white dots have helped along the edge of the helmet, around that ear casing on the side of his helmet and on the uh, weapon casing. And they just bring a little extra bit of definition and make it pop a bit more. Here I'm using a scorn red on top of that bloodstone red on the packs, again just bringing an extra sharpness and gives them a look as if they're red. I mean the red goes very well with the blue, it's not necessarily a military look, um, but again in 15mm when you're looking from a tabletop it's quite nice to see the definition between edges, unless you're a fan of complete camo style, in which case you know that's fine as well, but uh, they'd be a little bit harder to see from uh, tabletop height. So here comes the Griffin Sepia, probably one of my most used uh, paints from uh, Games Workshop. I'm just going to drop some into this uh, spare carton so you can see it's a very thin liquid ink. I actually tend to water it down a bit as well because if it goes all neat it can make your model look like a candy apple, like it's been uh, dipped in some sort of brown uh, substance and um, a lot of people are quite happy with that look but I tend to like to tone it down a bit with some water so that it's not going to look like a complete uh, brown overdose on the model but it will still bring some definition into those edges and um, covers up any um, dodgy bits of paint brushing and things you've done as well so it's a, a really great approach uh, I know it's been uh, popular to look at dipping these days where you uh, buy those um, large vats or tins of paint and uh, drop your modeling and shake it off so this is the same principle basically although it's the same principle it's uh, a little less hardcore so it's, it's not going to darken it as much and if I had more time and I was worried about detailing on here I might go over these with another darker shade into certain 
little nooks and crannies, but um, just for simplicity, I'm just doing one coat of this Griffin sepia all over, um, and you can see the brown is, is going in there. And, I, and the other thing is, just splash it all on because you don't have to worry about the fact that it's welling up in those corners. That's actually what you want, and it will dry out. Um, because it's the way they've, they've made these inks at Games Workshop, it will dry in a way that it doesn't leave um, nasty tide marks over everything. Now I'm using black ink. I could use the Games Workshop black ink again here, but uh, I've used one of these artist inks, which has a very nice strong pigment to it. But you do have to be careful and thin it down carefully. Now this is where I'm using this Pledge Clear multi-surface wax. Um, it's floor wax. It, it uh, is perfect for mixing with inks and doing washes. So. I have some in a spare mixing pot here and I'm just going to pop that in with that uh, black ink. Again I'm no scientist as far as how much I need to mix in but it uh, breaks the surface tension and ensures that your, your ink runs into all of the nooks and crannies. I also mix water in to thin it down um, but just as with the Griffin sepia I sort of splash it all over there uh, it's going to get into all the nooks and crannies around the uh, metal casing but you could see just as it went on that uh, battery pack there uh, it really does um, soak around the corners and get into the tiny crevices which gives you that impression of the shading and because the coverage is good with that uh, floor wax um, it's making sure it's dulling down as well on some of that bright highlight that I've put on there and gives it uh, some extra definition As with earlier on with the other paints, I've, I've now got a whole pool of that black ink which I, I'm not going to be using because I haven't got any other figures to do. So again, at 15mm scale it's worth doing a whole batch of models at the same time because it saves on paint. That means you don't have any wasted pools of ink left around. The models are not fully dry here but uh, they're a long way to being dry and I've used Hammerfall Khaki from P3 again to completely cover the base and I'm going to dry brush it up with Menoth White Base which gives it a kind of a look of buff, I think is the official colour that it's called which has a nice sort of deserty colour. I think a bright base also does a good job of um, increasing the brightness overall of a model because if you look down and it's got a very dark um, base it will kind of disguise the model some way so having a nice bright base helps for me. In the early days of painting, uh, I used to use a lot of dark browns, almost chocolatey browns for the bases. In fact, I've got a lot of my early Battletech models have got almost sort of dark brown with very dark, um, not very bright highlights on them as well. So um, it's a bit of a change around. Not everybody likes this sort of desert uh, sandy look, but I, I think it's quite effective. Um, and you can mess around with it a bit as well by adding some darker shaded patches or using inks on it as well. Now I'm going to touch up that Midland flesh. Now this was um, painted on earlier onto the faces and since then it's had the Griffin sepia ink splashed all over so I'm just going on again with this just to sort of bring in some extra definition on 
once that's come into focus there you can see I'm going on to the nose and some of the little detailed areas with it. In fact this is hardly going to be seen at all so you could just skip this phase, I don't know why I was doing it. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Tester's dull coat but I really like it, it's so dull, it's a really nice um, consistency when it sprays on and the small can seems to last quite a while. So that's gone on before I've done the static grass so it's now almost complete really in terms of the model's been sealed and it's, it's ready to, to game with. These are a couple of GZG Roach models and you can see I've used the same combination of um, Hammerfall Khaki and Menoth White Base to dry brush them as well and also added some static grass to them. This is some of the stuff I'm going to use which has that sort of desert dry look. Um, I'm going to mix it up with some brighter green as well which you can dry brush and tone down as well. I got both of those from Antonosity's workshop in the UK and this is the Citadel sort of fine burnt grass look which I also find excellent for 15mm because it's very short static grass. Super glue makes me a bit sick. I still have to use it for doing most of my modelling, but uh, where I can avoid it, I'll switch. So I'm using some Yoohoo glue here, which is completely solvent free to mount on the static grass. And, you know, it's not as strong as super glue, but for the job of just sticking some static grass onto the finished model, it's, uh, it does that perfectly. Just remember that when you're putting some of that bright green stuff onto a desert base, it's uh, worth giving it a dry brush to, just to tone it down slightly so you could use one of the colours to dry brush across it, uh, which just tones it down and makes it look less striking on a desert base. But uh, the thing to remember, if you're ever watching any uh, films on Africa or the Sahara or anything on TV, as long as it's not a complete desert sand dune region, you'll find there's a lot of green even in uh, desert regions, so there's nothing wrong with uh, popping on something that's quite bright and what would appear to be a desert uh, terrain. I'm being a little bit more fussy and fiddly here than I would be normally, but I'm just making sure that's fully glued down. Once I've got some more of that Yoohoo glue on there, I'll just stuff that down and uh, it'll dry on there very neatly. So thanks for listening to the full show. I've um, enjoyed painting this model. I uh, wish I'd done more at the same time, but uh, when you're filming it, it's very difficult to do more than one model at once, uh, which I've tried before on one of my spaceship painting guides, which is up on YouTube. But uh, good luck with these yourself, and thanks for listening in.